Okay, so hello everybody and welcome to this session. Um, I am broadcasting to you from Delhi. I'm with the, my name is Rebecca and I am with the visa office here in New Delhi. Um, today, really, I just want to take you through the visa application process. Now, I'm not going to take you through this in detail. Um, I will share details with you uh, of the relevant website. So more so, it's to highlight some of the main points um, of the application process and some of maybe the do's and the don'ts when you are applying for your Irish visa. So uh, Priscilla, maybe you can share the next slides. Uh, yeah, the next one after that is fine. So I suppose the first point is if you have decided that you are coming to Ireland and you are going to study in Ireland, really you have to have all your information before you start the visa process. So I've listed there two of the main websites that you really should visit. First one is our own um, Irish Embassy here in Delhi. There's a section on that which relates to visas and visa applications. Now, this is quite comprehensive. If you go into the study section, it will guide you through how to make an application, documents you need and how the process works. So really that should be your first port of call before you do anything else, please visit that website, read everything about the student application process before you start doing anything. The second one is our Irish immigration website. And again, if you go into that, there is quite a comprehensive section on studying in Ireland. It should answer a lot of questions you will have about the, again, the application process and studying in Ireland. So please, um, both of those websites really I would consider essential that you visit those and look at them and see if that answers all your questions before you even start your application process. Okay, so after that we can go ahead Priscilla. So I'm not going to go into detail on the application process. It is fairly straightforward. Um, I will just highlight a little bit that first thing is you have to create your online application through the ABAT system. Um, that's fairly straightforward. It will ask for your details. You fill it in, you complete it. And when you complete it, you print it out and you sign your form. Then you need to compile all your supporting documentation. I'll speak about that in a moment. Um, you pay your fee and lastly, then you are going to submit all the documents and you need to provide your bio biometrics at your local uh, visa application center. Again, you will be looking on our website to give information on um, all the documents that you need. Next one, Priscilla, please. Okay, so again, our website will state exactly all the documents that you need, but a brief overview of the ones you definitely need to have. You need, as I stated already, your online application form from AVATS. There's also the student supplementary application form, uh, your identity documents, and this includes all previous passports. So not just your current passport, but your previous passports as well. We do need to see those. Uh, your application letter, your HEI, so your college or your university, the letter of acceptance um, and enrollment into that university. Also confirmation of all the fee payments. So this will include the letter from your university stating that your fees are paid. And we also need to see the evidence of the fees being paid. So the electronic funds transfer to the university. You should include your educational awards and qualifications. Please do bring all of those at the time of making your application. Um, Whatever the English language requirements are for your given university, you should also bring that with you. Then it comes all of the required finances. Again, I'll speak about that shortly, about the finances required. Um, your medical insurance and finally your police clearance certificate. Okay, so let's go to the next slide, Priscilla. So. The, uh, the student information leaflet and checklist, you can get this from our website. So please print this out, look at it, check it. It states all the documents that are required. And I really urge you to go through that thoroughly and check that you have all of the documents that you need before you make your application. There's also a student information checklist on our website, on the DFA website. And again, you can get all the information there. Just we need to, to make sure that your documents are complete and you have everything. 
Now, this supplementary student application form, I would consider this one of the most important documents. This is very important from the visa officer point of view. And when we are reviewing and making decisions, this application form should be filled out completely. It gives us a very good, concise view of who you are, why you're coming to Ireland, which course you're undertaking, um, what education you have already, how are you providing the finances. So if you just fill that out as completely as you can, because this is a valuable resource when it comes to decision making and it makes the decision making process a lot easier for us. Uh, most of you will know there is a service available called the Check and Verify Service. Now, this is not mandatory for students to undertake, but I would encourage you to use the Check and Verify Service. The reason for this is when you avail of that service, a lot of document ver verification will take place. Um, that will be done before we get your application. So once we receive your application, a lot of um, documents have already been verified for us. So it will really aid the decision makers here um, doing the applications and it may um, make your application process a little bit quicker as well. Um, one thing I will say, and I can't emphasize this enough, when you go to the Visa Application Centre and you submit your documentation, you have to have everything with you. If you forget to bring documents or you don't have them at that time, we won't accept them at a later date. The visa officers here are going to make a decision based on all of the documents you provide at that time. We won't accept documents after that time. You can't email them in to us. You need to provide them at that time. So therefore, that's why the um, information leaflet and checklist is important, because once you submit the application, everything will be made on, on those documents. Um, if we find there's an important document missing, we won't be contacting you. We would be refusing the visa. The visa office is extremely busy, so we don't have time to go back to people to ask for additional documents. So please, I can't emphasize it enough, all your documents have to be submitted at the time that you make your application. Okay, next slide, Priscilla. Um, that's just a quick overview there of how you make your application. Again, this is on our website and you'll see that for everybody um, in India, you will go to your local application center. They will take your biometrics. You can do your online payment for that and all your documents there will be um, collected by VFS. In Nepal, there's VFS Kathmandu. They won't do biometrics there and you can see the payment details. Bangladesh, similar, that would be done in Calcutta. Um, Sri Lanka doesn't have the VFS service, so documents there would be submitted to the honorary consulate in Colombo. Again, depending on, on where you're coming from, you can find in India your local application centre. Nepal, you would be going to Kathmandu. Bangladesh, applications through Calcutta or by post directly to the embassy here. And Sri Lanka will be done in the honorary consulate in Colombo. Okay, next one, Priscilla. Okay, a lot of questions that come in to us, we get via email or people are phoning and they want to know when they should apply uh, for their visa. So what you can see there I've put up is just depending on the type of program you're applying to, you should leave, you know, six to eight weeks in advance of your course starting. What we would say is, um, in general, up to four months in advance of your course start date, you can apply for your visa. Um, the visa processing time, it takes maybe four to six weeks, but also you have to allow that during the summer months, the visa office is mu much busier, so it can take longer than that. Also, you have to allow time for your documents to be received by us from the Visa Application Centre and time for your passports to be returned to you after the visa process. Another thing for consideration is if you have to submit your documents to VFS, um, they are quite busy, so you need to allow time to make your appointment with them. You can't assume that you will just go online and be able to make an appointment for tomorrow. So maybe a case that when you go online to VFS, you can't get an appointment for one or two weeks. So please 
you know, build that into the timeline as well. I would say, and what I would encourage is once you have your documents ready and everything is good to go, um, if it's four months in advance, then just go ahead and apply for it. We prefer to get the applications sooner rather than later. Um, if we get, uh, if you have a late offer, we don't really accept applications less than three weeks before the course starts, unless you have something for your university stating that you were a very late offer, and then we might be able to consider that. But if we receive a visa application and it's maybe four weeks in advance of your course start date, that is allowed, but we can't guarantee that you would have it and it will be processed in time. Go with the next one, Priscilla, please. So again, this is just to reiterate those points that I made. Please do allow time for your appointment process with VFS. That's really important. You know, they're a busy office. They do a lot of visas for a lot of different countries. So you really have to allow time to make your appointment and get your appointment with VFS. Don't wait until like the last minute to apply. Once you have your documents, please, and you're ready to go, please just go ahead, make your application. And really, you know, visa processing time of four to six weeks is a guideline. You have to build in the time it takes for the visa office to get all your information from the visa application center. And also once a decision is made here, the visas has to go back in your passport, back to that application center and back to you. So you need to allow time for that as well. Okay, we'll move on, Priscilla. And we'll move on to the next one. So I did speak briefly there about the financials and I know a lot of the queries we get are about the financials. Again, I'm not going to go in depth on what we require. You can see this on our website and on the immigration website. But I will say that a large number of refusals do come down to financial issues. And it's one of two things. Firstly, maybe too little paperwork. So people do not give us enough of the required financial documentations. Therefore, we can't make a full assessment of the financials of that applicant and we cannot um, we cannot process their visa. The second scenario is where people provide us with too much paperwork. So they don't give us clear financial information. They give us bundles and bundles of financial paperwork. And it is extremely hard for the visa officers to assess and find the relevant information. So again, that can result in a visa refusal. So the ideal scenario is that along with your financials, you maybe give us a clear letter showing exactly how you have met the financials required, indicate to us where we can see those finances, maybe label them, code them, highlight things in bank statements if necessary. The clearer you can make your financials, the easier it is for the visa officer to assess your application. Next slide, Priscilla. Um, common issues that do come up are um, the source of funds are not accounted for. So somebody just tells us that they have enough money to pay for their course and living expenses in Ireland, but they haven't actually shown where those funds came from. Uh, bank statements for all of the parties haven't been submitted. So bank statements should be submitted for the applicant, but also for anyone who is listed as a sponsor. We need to see those bank statements also. Um, sometimes if the finances are spread across a lot of different areas, a lot of different accounts, fixed deposits, it's very difficult for us to assess that. So again, it would be good if you can highlight exactly where the funds are coming from or give us a summary sheet, something like that, that will assist the visa officers to make a decision. Um, if there are bank accounts that are non-computerized, again, that's difficult for us because computerized bank accounts, if you avail of check and verify, they can be verified for us through VFS, which means that when it comes to the visa officer making the decision, we already have verification of the bank account. So it does make the application assessment a lot simpler for the deciding officer. Um, again, just there's so many different types, mutual funds, crypto shares, chit funds, gold, etc. Please make sure the finances that you're submitting are, are proper finances, you know, your bank accounts, fixed deposit account, 
accounts, everything like that. And again, please, if you can include a summary sheet uh, with your application to tell us where the finances are coming from, again, that will make it a lot easier for the visa officer to review the application. Okay, Priscilla, go ahead. Um, just to continue on the financial requirements, I suppose what I've written there is the evidence of sufficient funds to co should be covering your full tuition fees and living expenses in Ireland for the duration of your studies. Bank statements need to date back six months for the applicant and also for the sponsor sponsors. So please, another issue we've had is people providing bank statements, but they only show us the last say, four or eight weeks. We need to see a full six months and they need to be the most recent six months. Um, if you're being sponsored by one person or two people, three people, however many number of people it is, we really need you to provide their full information, also their consent in the supplementary application form. And as I spoke about already, the supplementary application form, really pay attention to that, fill that in in full, make sure you put everything on it, all of the information you need that I need to see. It just, it will assist in the decision-making and it will help speed up the process if that is done properly. Um, any deposit or savings account, just make sure that there's a notarized letter from the bank confirming the money can be withdrawn. So something official from the bank telling us that is your savings account and you can withdraw those funds at any time. Okay, we can move on Priscilla. Uh, student loans, they are of course acceptable. Again, just ensure that you provide us with all of the details about the student loan. If the money has been drawn down yet, what has been authorised, how have the funds been uh, required, what is the security against them. So any student loans, education loans, please provide us with all the documentation regarding that so we can read it properly. And again, the source of finances. So it, Again, this relates back to being clear and concise about where the money is coming from. So if you have had a job before you're going to college, make sure you show us your employment and your wage slips. Make sure we see income tax returns from any sponsors, pay slips, everything like that. Again, please read through the information on the website about exactly what you need and please provide as much information as you can to us. Okay, Priscilla. And the last next one, please. Okay, so, you know, I know I've said these things a few times, but it's just really, it's so important for us. So read all of the information before you make your application. Try and educate yourself on what documents you need, how the process works. Um, read on our website, read on the immigration website, and that should really cover most questions that you would have. Paperwork so important everything on the um, checklist read the checklist make sure you've provided all of the paperwork that we need everything that's accounted for educational documents financial documents uh, documents of acceptance from your college all of these uh, use the checklist to tick them off and make sure you have provided everything again i i cannot stress this enough Everything you submit when you make your application, that is what we will make our decision on. We can't accept any additional information after that point. And if you've forgotten to send us something or we find something missing when reviewing the application, we, we will not be reaching out to ask you for that, that information that would can result in a refusal of your visa. With, when it comes to the financial information, please make it as clear and concise as possible. Provide all the financial documentation, but if you can please maybe provide a summary sheet as to where the finances are coming from, which accounts, who they belong to, sponsors' accounts, your own accounts, um, everything like that, fixed deposit, just really a summary um, of where the finances are coming from would be really beneficial for the decision make makers. Um, I've included there that really do not include any information that is false or that is misleading. If a visa officer is reviewing your file and we come across something and then we um, find out that this is not true information, that it's misleading information, that is, I mean, very, 
very poor and it's not good and it can result in a, obviously a visa refusal and in some cases it could result in um, an outright ban for five years from entering the, in Ireland or applying for any other visas. Um, you will have the option to apply for a single versus a multi-entry visa. That is up to yourself. Single entry visa allows you to enter Ireland just one time. When you get to Ireland, you then register as your student and get your long-term permission to reside in Ireland as a student. Uh, multi-entry visa just means that if you come into Ireland, um, you make your appointment for registration and for some reason you need to leave the country before you have registered, you will be able to re-entry enter the country on that multi-entry visa. Final thing is please do allow time for processing. Early applications are really good um, for us. It may, you know, it means it's better for you. We can review them and get them back to you as soon as possible. Remember the summer months get busier and as you get closer to acceptance time, you need to allow plenty and plenty of time for the application process to be done. Um, that's pretty much the main points that I wanted to cover with you guys. Um, I am here in the other chat room along with some of my colleagues to answer any questions so you can join us in the chat room. Now we do have a few minutes here so if there's any questions maybe that you want to just put in the discussion box I might have time to answer a few of them. Uh, I see some questions there about the English language. Um, so Duolingo, yes, that is still acceptable for us, along with the IELTS and the TEFL. They are, are both um, acceptable to us. Um, a few questions there about living expenses. Um, at the moment, in general, we would say um, seven to ten thousand per year would be the expected cost of living in Ireland. That can vary depending if you're going to be, um, you know, somewhere in the middle of Ireland or somewhere like Dublin, which is obviously more expensive. Again, I see people asking about the processing time. I would say in general, four to six weeks. Um, it, that would be general. Again, it can take longer than that, depending on how busy the office is and how many applications we are receiving. Someone is asking about the visa results. So um, on the visa website, you will see there are a, there's a visa decisions and they are put up um, twice a week, usually on Tuesdays and Fridays. So that will show all decisions made for the previous couple of days. So you will see that. Um, if you've submitted your passport to VFS, then once we have made a decision on your visa and the visa is issued, it will be returned to VFS and they will then return it to you. Um, September 2022 intake, I would say from, from June, you could apply for, for that. Even probably middle of May would be fine to start applying if you're in the September intake into Ireland is fine. Uh, people are asking here about the type of sponsors. Uh, in general, what we see that sponsors tend to be relatives. So most in most cases, you know, a mother or a father. Um, if it's not a, a parent or an immediate relative, just you really need to include details on that sponsor, how, how they are associated to you, why they are your sponsor. Um, you know, it, it all types of sponsors are generally looked at, but the closer the relationship, the easier it is for us to assess. And in general, you know, it's better if it is a close relative or a, or a parent.
if your university has a waiver of the English language test, then no, you don't need to submit the language test report. We just need to have something from your university that states that the English language test is not required. Um, one of our checklists will be to check that the English language test report is with an application. So if it's not required for your university, please include something from the university that states that. Um, so somebody here says they had a US visa refusal in August 2018. Okay, if you've any previous visa refusals from other countries, you, it, it, um, you just need to let us know about it. So we just need to be clear if you have someone, it, it, we will just use that as part of the decision making process. It doesn't mean that you won't get a visa, but you do need to share that information with us. I see the question about Sri Lankan students. Again, if you're in Sri Lanka, you're, you can do your application online, but your documents and everything need to be provided to the consulate in, um, in Colombo. Someone is asking, can you reapply if your visa is rejected? Um, yes, I mean, you can make a new application if your visa is refused, it's, it's no problem. I uh, see a question about a spouse. No, a, a spouse cannot go with you on a student visa. You can't bring family with you, no. Someone's asking about refusals again. If your visa is refused, you will re receive a refusal letter and that will outline the reasons that your visa is being refused. Um, yeah, if a parent is, is a sponsor and they're 100% sponsor, you will need to provide their bank account statement for the previous six months. If you do not have any income yourself or do not have a bank account, then you need to state that on the application and let us know that you don't have your own income and you're completely reliant on a parent. Again, someone's asking about the time to apply. If you're planning to be in Ireland at the end of August, then you should be really applying in May for that. The sooner you can, the better. So I would say May or June, you need to apply for that. Okay. So 
someone is asking if they can self-fund and not have a sponsor yes that that is fine um if you have the funds to sponsor yourself then you in your um application form and in your covering letter you just let us know that you are sponsoring yourself and your and nobody else so we can and uh, make sure you show us all of the funds as well A visit visa is different, yes. So if you are in Ireland on studies, of course, uh, you know, a parent can apply to come and visit you. That is a separate application which will re be reviewed separately and they would just need to state um, and show us that they are coming to visit uh, you in Ireland. Perfect. So we're just going to finish up there now. Um, as I said, I am available in the chat room along with some of my other colleagues. So if you have more queries, please, then if you want to come into the chat room, join us there, we'll answer your questions. Okay. Thank you very much.